Okay, so this is an optional extra for people who do know a bit of calculus, who have to know a bit of calculus, and um, who want to see where this, the exponential discharge equations come from. So, well, let's have a quick look. Let's imagine this is the discharge of a capacitor. And so, well, the first thing to realise is that, to remember, is that current is the rate of flow of charge. So, delta Q by delta T. And of course, because it's a negative gradient here, so we're going to put it at a minus to reflect that it's a, it's a reduction in charge on the place of the capacitor. The current is a negative, it's going in the minus direction. Okay, uh, and so, well, because we're going to have also a resistor in the circuit, we're talking about a capacitor discharging through a circuit which has a resistor in it of resistance R. So we also know that I is going to equal V over R because um, that's, we know that's true. Yes, I equals V over R. So we actually now have V over R equals minus delta Q by delta T. But of course V is the potential difference across, um, across the capacitor. And we know that, that's, that that therefore, because Q equals VC, then we know that V equals Q over C. So we can actually rewrite that again, and we can say, ah, well, that means that we've got Q over CR equals minus delta Q over delta T. So there we go, looks a bit fishy, but there we are. And then now we can just rearrange things a little bit here uh, so that we can integrate to find out the charge at time T. I'll show you what I mean. So if we rewrite that, we can write delta Q over Q equals to minus delta T over RC. And then we're going to write it in the um, making those intervals as small as possible so that we can um, do some integration. So in the, in the limit, so we write DQ over Q equals minus DT over RC. And then we are going to integrate. We're going to integrate and we're going to say, okay, well, let's see what happens if we go from, uh, if we integrate from time zero to time t. And we're starting with q zero, the charge at um, time equals zero, and going to the charge at time t. Well, if we do that integration, hopefully you'll agree with me that we get the natural log of q and that'll be between Q and Q0. And on the other side, we're going to get minus, if I can squeeze that in, um, T over RC, between T and zero. And if we evalu evaluate those limits, we're going to get the natural log of Q minus the natural log of Q0 equals minus T over RC. And we can do a little bit more with that. We can say, OK, well, that's the natural log of Q over Q0, if using the log rules, equals minus T over RC. So it's going to be pretty promising. Um, the next stage is just to exponentiate that. So, um, well, if we raise that uh, e to the power of that equation, then we get, then we get on the left-hand side, Q over Q0. And on the right hand side, we get e to the minus t over rc. And just a bit of re rearrangement, q equals q0 e to the minus t over rc. So there we go, nice.